Man, I am excited about this one. KP is excited about this one. We need help. We need help in this apart in this department. That's why you are here, Mr. Brad Davidson. Thank you for being on the show, oh, brother. Super excited to be here, man. It's gonna be fun. I'm looking at your book right now, The Stark Naked 21 Day Metabolic Reset. It says effortless weight loss, rejuvenating sleep, limitless energy. More mojo. That's what I need. Brad, hook me up, baby. <laughs> it's good stuff in life, right? Man, that's incredible. <laughs> so we met. We have the same uh, business coach. Yeah, Jim Haley. Jim, how long have you been working with Jim for? On and off for like 10 years. Wow, man. Yeah. It's been a long... I love that guy. It's been a long Jim's time. Jim's a Jedi. He, it, for sure, yeah. a Jedi. <laughs> so Jim connected us. And then also, you know, you're, you've been in the rad dad mastermind group yes, with us yeah and then you were very helpful in my 100 day challenge where i got the bright idea to do a 5k every day for 100 days that was insane. and i hit you up around day 60 i'm like dude i'm feeling like a bag of bones what do i do you 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 gave me some insight on some supplements and stuff and it really helped perfect so when where did this journey start for you I mean, as a kid, it started. I was I was an athlete, but I was always the little kid. Yeah. And um, I was always so undersized that I had I had to find ways to compensate for my lack of size. Okay. Um, so I became super infatuated with exercise, nutrition, all that stuff. Uh, so kind of started there. And um, so obviously, I went into college. I studied it. I remember I came out of college. I got a job as a trainer. Okay. I remember I, I one day. Um, I had a guy tell me, a buddy of mine tell me, like, when are you going to grow up and get a real job? I was like, Jesus, I, I thought this was a real job. Was. And so, okay. So I went into corporate America, hated it. Yeah. And I decided at that point, I'm going to figure out how to make this my job. Wow. And make it a real job because I can't sit in a cubicle and work like this. Yeah. It'll kill me quick. Yeah. So that's kind of where it all, that, that it all started from. So how many years did you stay? Did, were you a trainer before you said, you know what, maybe this, this isn't real? Yeah, so I had my first job as a trainer in 1996 All in right. Portland, Oregon. I opened up a golf gym up there. Um, and it was 2000, I think 2002. Okay. When I was like, oh, I, I should get a real job. And so I went into corporate America, went in the world of finance. Oh, you were the, the owner of that golf gym, the manager? No, no, no. no. I, I, was just, I was just one of the trainers okay, gotcha, there. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, the brand yeah. new one. Yeah. Um, and I remember I saw this picture of me outside of our office. And I looked horrible. Oh, wow. And that was the day I was just like, oh my gosh, no way. Like, yeah. I, no way. My posture was bad. I looked miserable. My body fat was going up. I was like, okay, I can't do this anymore. Wow, I know so. how that feels, man. I know how that feels to like feel this calling to do something. Yeah. You know, but then also as a man, you got to make bread. Yeah. You know, and then doing this other thing to make money and just feeling like, like 2007, I had been in real estate for three or four years and it yeah. was like who the hell who is this dude yeah wearing these boxy ass <laughs> suits that didn't fit yeah. just like oh yeah so what was your first step in leaving the corporate world and coming back into doing what you love um so i just i went back into studying a bit i hired a trainer a guy that kind of became my mentor um just kind of get back Did into you it get out of shape Oh God, yeah. Oh really? Uh, yeah, it was bad. Yeah. Um, it's really easy. Like once you stop doing it, you lose your motivation. Right. Um, once you stop moving, everything just slows down. Right. And yeah. It gets really hard to start moving again. So it's all about momentum. So I needed to pick up some momentum. So I hired a mentor, a trainer. Okay. A guy that I really respected that kind of showed me the ropes, kind of got me back in the stuff I really wanted to learn, and I just started investing everything I had into these seminars and these experts around the world that I knew of. And I just went out and started picking the pieces, the stuff I found that I loved about their stuff. Right. I actually started off as a spinal rehab expert. So okay. people would come out of physical therapy and they would hire me to get them back in the sport, back in the living. Um, that's where it started. That's interesting. You're kind of like being the person uh, that, that you needed. Yeah, right? totally. Because these are people who kind of fell out of that thing that they were doing. Yeah. And so you naturally started doing that for other people. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So and it just kind of... And so then, did you have to do a, a fair amount of school? I, d I didn't go to a traditional school route. Okay. I, I had studied it in college, and, and I learned real quick that what they taught in college uh, was going to leave me uh, with nothing. Mm. Um, so I, instead, I took that money. I dropped out of college and so I realized that. I literally had a professor. He and I got in an argument because he was teaching me something that I knew didn't work from my experiences. Wow. And I told him, I said, it doesn't work in real life. And I said, I'm not going to answer the test wrong. I'm going to answer what works. He well, said, well. Do you well, remember what it was all about? I, I don't remember. 
But you just knew. I just knew. It was so long ago. That yeah. was, I mean, that was 19, that was 1994. So if, if we could like bottle up what it is that you do that like, like what are you the specialist at? Uh, giving people their life back. Yeah. That and then optimizing the top performers in the world. Man. Just getting that extra little umph to make them from good to great. So your claim to fame's the best of the best. Who are those people like? Who have you who who have you worked with? Oh boy, uh, in the last few years, I do a lot of work in the NFL. Okay. So uh, Carson Wentz, I've worked with Jared Goff. I helped prepare for the NFL Combine. Blake Bortles, uh, James Connor. I've worked with a couple of Navy SEALs. Yeah. Uh, I worked with a couple of SWAT teams, a couple of SCB teams. Wow. Uh, I just prepped a kid to, um, for the PJs. Wow. The, the, the indoctrination process of the PJs. That's super cool. Super Man. proud of that kid. Uh, yeah, so I love athlete. And people who are, you work with these guys on a one-on-one level? Yeah, all my stuff has been in the trenches one-on-one. Lots of CEOs. Guys yeah. have had four billionaires I've worked with. And why do you know how to, like, like what is what is it that you have, right, that, that, these billionaires, Navy SEALs, freaking top performance athletes. They're like, Brad's my guy. Yeah, I, I think it comes from personal experience. Yeah. Uh, I was 33, 2008. I was training all these professional athletes, and I thought, you know, I'm going to do something crazy. I'm okay. going to go show the world how good my stuff is. And at 33, I'm going to make an Olympic team. Wow. So I started just digging online, and I found uh, the U.S. bobsled team. Okay. And uh, decided I was going to call this coach and, and basically work my way into a tryout. And I got the tryout, um, and I remember I, I, made the, I made the team. I had to finish in the top 20. I finished 17th. Absolute scrub, but I was there. Yeah. I, I was immediately the old guy, <laughs> Gramps. Like, I was the old dude. Um, but I was competing with these kids and training with these kids, right. and it was super fun. But I very quickly picked up the reality of, oh, my gosh, I've never competed at this level. What it takes is so much more yeah. than what I thought it took. Okay. And in a 10-month period, I put on 52 pounds of lean muscle mass. I got to a point where I was running a 4440 at a 42 inch vertical jump at 33, pretty good numbers. It was awesome. Damn. So um, I got the reality check of, oh, there's what we all think these guys okay. need and these women need, and there's what they really need. It's a whole different ball game. Right, right. So I understood that. But then I also picked up the fact that um, I took everything the industry had taught to an extreme. And I learned real quick that what's being taught out there isn't typically for that person. Mm. So like I was avoiding carbs like the plague because you don't eat carbs. I was training twice a day, six days a week. My, my whole role is just to outwork these kids right. was how I was going to try to make it. And uh, on the outside, I looked incredible. I remember one time I had to get a, a farmer. I had a real bad farmer stand. I'd have a picture taken. Yeah. I wanted to get a spray tan to even out the farmer stand. Yeah. And I remember the girl, just right down the street, the girl turns around. She looks at me. She's like, oh, my God, you look like a teenage mutant ninja turtle. I'm like, Pfft. I got this thing figured out. Like, I'm the man. Um, you look and then, like Dallas Reigns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I had a little baby girl. And all yeah. of a sudden, 90 miles on our 10 can. I was like, oh, my God, people die doing this. Like, what am wow. I doing? So I pulled the plug immediately. And within a matter of two weeks, my whole physiology crashed. Wow. Uh, I got to the point I couldn't get out of bed. Hair was falling out of my face. My beard was just falling out. Um, it was weird. And I went to the doctor and got the diagnosis that I looked incredible. But I was diabetic. Okay. I had to be put on metformin. Uh, my thyroid had shut down. I had a testosterone level of an 85 year old sick man. It was crazy. Like all of a sudden, I'm realizing, whoa, um, I'm closer to death than I am to optimal living. But I look great. And you were doing all the things. Doing all the things perfectly. So I what did you cars. have wrong? I was not. I was listening to advice for, and I, I don't mean to sound rude when I say this, but. For like sick, lazy people have no stress in their life. Okay. They don't like to exercise. They don't like to get out and do things. You feed those people carbs, they'll kill you. It was Rob Wolf, the author of the Paleo Diet, that brought this to my attention. Okay, he's like, I, I didn't write the book for you. Like people like you that train the level you're training, the amount of stress you're under. If you don't control the stress, right, you're gonna wipe out your metabolism. And in the exact same place, these people that are lazy under no stress, eating carbs or anything. Wow. So there's like polar extremes. Yeah. And I just went from the opposite extreme. And then the way I got out of my diabetes issue was I started eating carbs every day. Hmm. It was a stress response I needed to learn how to control. And so I learned how to control that, learned how to bring my metabolism back. It took me a long time. But now I have the special key of I understand how to push these people. But I also understand the more important aspect, which is recovery. Hmm. And people think, oh, how important is recovery? Well, steroids is cheating. Right. And the cheating mechanism is these people out recover everyone else by taking steroids. Wow. So what I've just learned how to do is, okay, here's how you manage recovery at a high, for a high performing person to make sure that fatigue is not an issue. How big of what you do is that aspect of recovery? 
it's pretty much all I focus on now. Really? Like I, I had a gym when I was first learning all this. I sold it because what I realized was that people are over fatigued. They're not under exercised. And the way you create change, what I call effortless weight, effortless weight loss, people make fun of it. But the reality is if you are fatigued and metabolism's offline, exercise is only gonna make you worse. Yeah. So what I get people to do is I get them to start resting more, have them eat certain ways to heal up the metabolism. And people will lose on average 12 pounds in the first three weeks doing no exercise. It's because hook there's a me lack. up, bro. Yeah, it's just a lack of recovery. <laughs> K- KP's over here like, yeah. look, K- KP is, listen, I've never seen K- KP on the edge of his seat. He's love on the it. edge of his seat right now. Love it, love it. Yeah, so wow, it's just a different man. ball game. It's just it's understanding who it is I work with and understand what their metabolism really needs okay. to take them to that next little level. What role does mindset have in all this? And Because what I'm kind of grasping to is like what you do is not for the everyday person. Correct. Right? This is for like serious people. Mm-hmm. Right? If you're really serious about your health, if you're really serious about peak performance. Yeah. Right? What what role does, and I love that. You know, I've learned uh, in what I do as a coach and what I do as an agent, I don't deal with people who are just kind of playing around. Right. You know, I had an agent tell me the other day that I know, like somebody pretty close to me, he's like, you know, like I'm fine. We're just kind of getting by. I'm like, what the, <laughs> what, 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 yeah. the, how could you, what, I like, uh, I can't, what do you mean, bro? Like, yeah. that's the exact opposite of everything that we're, like, we're aiming for, for greatness. Yeah. Well, how could we even, ha- we, could, we can't actually even hang out. Yeah. We can't even be friends, oh, dude. That would drive me crazy. What, what, why yeah. would you just want to get by? Yeah. You know, and the more we actually went down the rabbit hole of that conversation, there were some things that he was attaching to excellence, which was, well, you know, I like to have a three-day weekend. Uh, and the other thing really was just fear. Yeah. So why he didn't want to go all in the way we go all in is because he, he feels like he wouldn't be able to have a, a three-day weekend. And uh, the bigger one was that he just didn't believe that it was possible for yeah. himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? What role does mindset play in in Um, your work it's everything um it's everything but it's it's differences it's like okay because so many people are killing themselves with exercise for example yeah and i like to dig into the reason why and so often it's just an insecurity people believe that if i just change how i look if I just lose this 20 pounds, or yeah. get this magic percent body fat, my life's going to be different. If I just have a six pack, dude, my whole life will be different. Yeah. That's garbage. It doesn't no? happen. I, I see people get to that point all the time. You're doing these sit ups for nothing? Yeah. It's like <laughs> they get there and they're like, my life is no different. Yeah. Except it's a lot harder. I'm sacrificing everything. Uh, nobody loves me anymore. Right. My life is no different. I'm more insecure now than ever. I'm putting more pictures of myself up online trying to get people to pay attention to me. Right. Um, I like to break that. Because if that's what's pushing you, you're going to crash. Mm. And you're missing out on the greatest gift you can give yourself and your physiology, which is this true way of taking care of yourself, your health, your nutrition, your exercise, to drive greater performance in in the world and in your life and experience a better life versus just looking good, feeling horrible. That's that's the big thing that I'm breaking into first. Is that layer of what is it you're doing this for? And then, in all honesty, at the highest level of performance, the people I work with, at that level, they have crazy strong mindsets. Yeah. Um, they've spent a lot of time. They have their coaches. They have their people. That's the funniest thing is that at that level, they'll have their people. They got their people. They have their mindset. Yeah. Person. That's how you got in there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so I come in and I'm just a physical component of right. it. They have their mindset people. They wow. have their coaches. Um, it's fascinating how much they surround themselves with coaching. Right. When they're the best of the best and they just want to get a little bit better. Yeah. They want to get in that top 3%. It's just, it's it's all this coaching around them. I just signed up again. I just signed up with two new coaches. Yeah. And I'm at a, the, I mean, I'm at what I feel is like the best place I've ever been in business. Best place I've ever been with my marriage. But I think that's what makes you want, at least for me, that's what makes me want to go get a coach. Yeah. Because I'm like, I don't want to lose this. No, exactly. I don't want to lose this. I want to make it better. Yeah. And I know how to lose it. I lose it by thinking I got it. Yeah. I got it all figured out. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible. So, I you mean, know, for- one thing that I focus on with people that, that I think is very important in this realm of mindset is um, high achievers tend to be very self sacrificial. They'll sacrifice everything yeah. for success. But oftentimes in that realm, it's who pays the price, mm. it's the people you love the most. Mm. So, what I'll get people to do, the one thing I'll have these high achievers focus on is I'll have them pick out someone they love more than anything. Okay. 
And I'll have them sit back and think about how is your health impacting the life of this person you love so much? Wow. Are they experiencing you at a higher level or are they getting the rest of you? Are they getting wow. the best of you or the rest of you at the end of the day? Damn. Yeah. It's a really powerful way to look about it. Because when you, That's when, awesome. Yeah. When you take, when you take care of yourself for someone you love more than anything, um, it, it makes it much easier to make the hard decisions on should I have that Coke or that bottle of water? Right. Because if I have the Coke, it's in my world, it's my little four-year-old. Yeah. I know when I get home and I'm super energetic, he wants to play. Yeah. And so every my whole decision around is if I do that, he pays the price. So that's one of the first things you do with your coaching. Yes. Is okay. if you dial that. Even when I speak, it's the first thing I do when I go out and I speak. I was just in Minnesota speaking to a company. It's the first thing I do. I make them all pick somebody and I make them look at reality. And it's like, how is that person experiencing you? Wow. And, and who is it in your life that deserves a better version of you? Mm. And when you use that mindset in regards to taking care of yourself for them, it's awesome. Damn. But the one thing I learned Sick. with this mindset with my little boy was that there's one thing he did not care about. He doesn't care about my abs. Yeah. <laughs> does not care about my abs. He cares about my ability to engage, to play, right. to have fun. Does not care how I look. Right. Yeah. And that was really shifting my mindset of everybody, all, everybody thinks exercise is forced to look great. It's not. It's to drive your energy, to drive the experience that people around you get of you. It's super powerful. And, 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 and so what, what other practices do you have to get somebody out of that? Like, yo, this ain't about your, 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 your uh, photos in Tulum. On Instagram, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, in, in my world, if that's what it's all about, they won't make it. Right. It, it's just like, I mean, e even even in the world of professional athletes, it's very interesting how often I get fired because it's too hard. Yeah. There, there's there's the best and then there's the good. And, 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 you know, oftentimes the good, they just lack the commitment to excellence and it begins to show. Mm. Uh, it'll show real quick within the first two weeks of what we're doing. If wow. we're out drinking and puking and like, it's not going to last very long. Yeah. And that tends to be those people that are, are, are using exercise, nutrition, not to better their performance in the world, not to have better engagement in the world, but to just change how they look and kind of get more of the, um, the less valuable things in life. That's huge, man. Yeah. Well, on your site, right, one of the questions you ask is you say, are you a victim to outdated fitness and nutrition advice? Yeah. Right? Which it's like, you, I think about that question. It's like, man, there's so much out there. Yeah. Where do you begin? <laughs> Why is that one of the main questions on your site? Because it's overwhelming. And oftentimes people have no idea why they're doing what they're doing. Yeah. Um, somebody just told them to do it or they heard some friend has lost 20 pounds doing it. Right. Um, a classic example, I exercise like crazy, avoided carbs like the plague and I almost killed myself. I became diabetic. I had a testosterone. I was an 85 year old sick man. Like I was just, I ended up in andropause. Yeah. At 33. Like that's male menopause at 33. Wow. But you would not think that if I exercised really hard and avoided carbs and ate perfect that I would end up there. It's just the reality is, is that so much of the information in the, in the industry is focused on the wrong thing and the wrong people and if you're getting your hands on the wrong information or outdated information, you're going to pay the price. Yeah. And, and if you judge it by how you look, because I looked incredible. Right. So if you're judging it by how you look, you don't know until it's too late if it was a bad choice or not. So it's just a matter of... So although you... Go ahead. It's just oh, a matter so, yeah, of... Yeah, it's just a matter of understanding who you are, what you need, and finding the right information for your specific situation. Okay. Now, I don't know how many Navy SEALs or pro athletes listen to my stuff so i'm gonna dumb it down a little bit and we'll see let's let's, let's give some of our, our listeners i think kp and i are great examples of our average listener yeah right so i'm uh i got nothing nothing good going on in here i got uh you know i got a decent workout regimen kp kp's got some good fitness goals he sends me his jumping jack videos every morning we're your perfect guinea pigs right love here it. love it all right so step one i love what you said step one is know that this is about for me, this is about me pouring love on my four kids. Yeah. KP, it's about getting home to his wifey, Claudia. So we got that figured out. It's not about our abs at our summer trip on Instagram. Okay. What's step two? What are the basics of, of eating that we should be aware of? Well, I think step two is first grasping the reality of where your metabolism is at. Okay. So I typically challenge people for the next three days, I want you, I want you to no coffee, no alcohol, none of that stuff. Okay, I could do no coffee. Yeah. I mean, I could do no alcohol. Yeah. If I, had to, if I had to ask you to cut out no coffee for the next three days, how would you be functioning by day three? Oh, shit. Would you feel like a million bucks still, or you'd be trashed? Oh, man. Would it be tough? I don't... I, coffee is my thing, dude. Yeah, I'm like two cups things. of coffee, like by 10. Yeah. Now, now is that just to gauge it? That's just to gauge, because if, uh, if a metabolism is really online, and I cut out coffee, you won't feel much different 
day three. Okay. So if I cut out coffee and by day three you're a walking train wreck, you can't function, that tells me right then and there your metabolism's offline. It needs some resuscitation, basically. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this live. This is dropping next Monday. So for the listeners, we're going to post this on, on, on actually Sunday at midnight. Monday, I'm going to start drinking no coffee. Love it. And I'm going to report it, and I'll be tagging you throughout the week. So you guys will be seeing Brad. I'll be tagging him and, and kind of reporting how I feel. Perfect. What's next? So from there is if you don't feel great, I, that's when I put people on a reset. Okay. So often the first step, and, and I fall into the same category as you guys, right? I'm not a professional athlete. I'm not a tactical team member or anything like that. Um, I'm just an average Joe guy that wants to be better for my family as well. Um, so it's all about, okay, where's the energy at? If the energy's not through the roof, ready to fly off the handles, uh, I got to resuscitate that. I got to rebuild that. So I, I would typically start somebody off on a reset, okay. which is 21 days, 30 days if you jump on my website, um, to rebuild the metabolism, clean up the liver, help rebuild the adrenals, stabilize blood sugar, help clean up the gut health, get rest back in check. Now, what if I feel fine by Wednesday? Does that mean I could drink coffee on Thursday? Yeah, I'd be okay with it. I'm just gonna lie. Yeah, that's what most people do. <laughs> great. I'm but I good. just so you know, like I, I still I do a reset once or twice a year. Okay. It's like I when it's I get time, to that man. point. It's just perfect timing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would challenge reset. you to give it a go because it's awesome. I'm gonna do it. Yeah. It, you know, it's a funny story how it came about was that I got challenged to write a book that like I turned in my original program for 90 days. Like nobody will do a 90 day program. It's gotta be 30 days or right. less. And I turned in a 30 day program. Well, that's old news. It's gotta be 21 days or less. Well, I don't think that's possible. Okay. Like, well, here's what we're willing to pay. You go for it. <laughs> I'm like, I'll figure it out. Like, yeah. um, and so I just took everything I did with my professional athletes for the first month after the season. They're not afraid to take a month off of exercise. Okay. And they just recover. They, they eat this certain way to bring down inflammation. It's all about rest and regeneration and getting away from their work for a little bit. Anything else that I should plan to do? So I'm, in, I'm on the bike. I'm on my Peloton like six days a week. Yeah. You know, I do a lot of cardio because it helps me get my mind and blood flowing. Yeah. Um, will I be taking a break from that? It, I mean, it depends. Are you, are you committed to something like you were, like the 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 hundred day challenge, the five? Well, I was sick last week, and so I was at man, I was at a hundred and eighty something days straight. Wow! And I was just adding the days, and I was like, well, let's keep going. Yeah. And I got sick last week, so uh, I'm off. Yeah. Like I'm enough. This is the first time in over a hundred something days. So what I, what I like on the reset is to back off harder exercise to two, three days a week max. Okay. I like people to go for a walk every day. It's all about reducing stress and resting and recovering. I'm, I'm here's game. the thing. Here's, here's the other thing you can ask yourself: Do I crave exercise more than anything? If the answer is yes, you probably don't need the reset. If you're like, ah, I'm kind of pushing myself to do it, and I do it because it makes me feel a little bit better, but my energy's kind of lagging. Yeah. I would say back off. I will for, tell you for the last. Two and a half, three weeks, I honestly don't know what my deal is, but my wife has literally been kicking me out of bed. Yeah. Like, n not because she's mean, but because I say to kick me out of bed if I'm not getting up out of the way. And, bro, I'm having a really hard time yeah. in my mornings. And so I'm like, well, maybe I just, maybe it's because I'm getting five and a half hours of sleep. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, your metabolism is just telling you I need more sleep. Okay. That's when I like a situation like this to come into play, bring in a reset to bring the metabolism back online. Yeah. Clean it up. Give it a break. I mean, everything needs rest and recovery and a break. High achieving people that are trying to reach for a better life, especially if you have kids. Yep. We start cheating our sleep. We start forcing ourselves to exercise. We start pushing the boundaries. And the one thing we give up is recovery because we have not been taught yet how important it is to recover well. So I would say go for a recovery phase of doing the reset, um, you know, 21 days, 30 days, whatever you want to do. So what else will I be doing in this 21 day recovery? Sleeping more. Sleeping more. It's probably the most important thing. So I'm going to be sleeping more and working out less. I'm yeah. feeling this idea. Yeah. And work and sleeping more and working out less. Yeah, dude, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of feeling there's, this so far. I, I Anything else? A, I learned from a great mentor of mine, Dr. JT, that there's two ways to manage the metabolism long term and to get long term results. It's eat less, do less, eat more, do more. Mm. Because all the metabolism really is, he's shown, is a stress barometer. And it's just giving you, if, if the metabolism's off, it's giving you signs and symptoms it's not doing well. For right. example, you start getting hungry. Your energy begins to tank. You start having cravings. You get moody, right? Everybody's done that. You go on some crazy oh, diet. Yeah. And before you know it, nobody wants to be around get you because you're miserable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a sign yeah. your metabolism saying, this isn't working. We're going to shut you down. Okay. So what I've learned is if the metabolism's off, you're feeling sluggish, uh, your energy's not there, we go to an eat less, do less plan, which is the reset. For a period of time, so you start feeling good again, and then we push it to an eat more, do more. And at that point, you know, if you want to work out twice, I have, I have a lot of CrossFit athletes. Right. Six, eight hours a day in the gym cranking, fine. They just got to eat a ton of food. Wow. 
if you hate to exercise, fine. Just eat less food. It's all okay. about just managing the stress of the, of, of the metabolism long term. Got it. So, All right, man. Well, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. Starting that Monday. The Monday this comes out, I'll be posting. Love it. I'm going to drink a lot of coffee this week. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, the first three days are pretty rough. But by day five, you feel like a million dollars. And the first thing that comes back is clarity of thinking. Okay. And then all of a sudden, like solutions, solving problems, the brain begins to work the best first. Awesome. And then, then all of a sudden the energy comes and by, by day 21, you're flying off the handles with great energy. Like I'm actually a little nervous how energetic you're going to be at that point. I'm, I'm maybe going to call from your dude. wife. What the hell did you do? <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll be keeping you on. I'll be keeping you on track. Keeping, yeah. keeping, you'll be keeping me on track. Yeah. I love it. So what do you think is missing in like the health and fitness industry and like kind of where, where, where does you and your company fit in? Yeah. The, the, what's missing is what do you do outside the gym? Right. It's all about what you do in the gym. But I mean, let's say you work out every day, seven days a week. That's like seven hours of the week. Well, right. What about all the other hours? Yeah. They make or break your results in the gym. So what we've done is I launched a company called EatSleepRecover.com. Okay. And it's everything you need as an individual outside of the gym to get better results from your result, better awesome. results from your exercise in the gym. Awesome. Um, and so. And so you cover the supplements to take, yep. everything on there. Yeah, it's nutrition, the supplementation, recovery strategies. Uh, how to sleep better, all the coaching tips are all on there and they're individualized to people's needs. Awesome. Um, so yeah, from a supplementation standpoint, I look at supplementation as there isn't one right supplement for everyone, but we can all use supplementation to fine tune and get quicker results yeah. and to keep the metabolism in a good place. Right. So the supplements we're using them are there to support the metabolism. They're not things like ripped fuel or muscle mass 3000. Right. It's things like you know a B-complex, a liver support, a blood sugar support. It's parts of the metabolism that are breaking down and keeping us from looking good, feeling good, and performing better. Um, and so that's how the system works. So every 30 days, it's judging what's going on and making the right changes for a person to continue to get progress. And so are there ways of like going on your site, you put together a program? Like how could the everyday Joe do it's, your deal? Yeah, super simple. And on eatsupercover.com, literally they just go there. And they answer a bunch of questions and it'll kick out a program for their specific needs. And then there's weekly questionnaires, monthly questionnaires that adjust the program as a person's going. And it'll start picking up. If it's picking up and your metabolism is getting tired, it's going to pull the plug on you and want you to do a reset. So what the system is different about the system is it's managing your metabolism and the stress you're under. It's not managing calories in, calories out. It knows all that stuff. Right. But what it's running off of is what is your metabolism doing? What's it need? Got it. And what it's doing is bringing everything the metabolism needs to recover from your training to get better results from your training. And this is something anybody can kind of plug into yes. your system on the site. Yeah. Sick. I, and, and honestly, it's, it's built for everybody, okay. right? Because if somebody doesn't like to exercise and they choose not to exercise, it's going to pick that up and give them what they need still. Right. That person's still dealing with stress in life. Yeah. And so they're still going to need the support and the recovery around that, even if they don't like to exercise. Now, I think people should go for a walk at least 30 minutes, five times a week. The, the study that I read on that, um, 150 minutes of exercise a week, moderate exercise, just walking can reduce risk of all forms of mortality by 47%. I right. think you're silly not to at least do that. Yeah. But above and beyond that, if it's more of a vanity thing or performance thing, it'll pick that up and it'll support you in that as well. I don't care how much you like to do. I don't have any judgment on any type of exercise. Right. I mean, I would never tell anybody. Is there anything to wrong with working out seven days a week? No, as long as you're recovering from it. Okay. As long as there's enough energy to drive the recovery process once you go to bed at night and you're making progress, I don't care. Wow. You can train six hours a day, seven days a week, as long as you're recovering from it, it's working for you. And when what what and because you're an expert at this, right? Like, what is your definition of recovery? What does it like really mean? Because I, I think mean, for the listeners, it can mean all types of different things. Yeah, it can mean all types of different things. But it's um, what's it mean to you? Having the ability to do the things I want to do every day at the level I want to do them, yeah. my way. Yeah. If I'm tired, that's affected. Mm. If my muscles aren't working well and I'm too fatigued and I don't have the energy to get home at night to play with my kids, at, like all in, so I didn't that's recover it. Well. That's what you teach. You teach how to go out and if you're somebody who throws cars throughout the day, you lift tires and you throw them into the lake and you take them out of the lake and you're just throwing giant things all day long, yeah. you could teach that person how to yes. do that every single day. And recover from it. Yeah. Sick. And we, there's, there's cool tools that I use like heart rate variability tools okay. that will tell people... Um, Hey, really good day to go hard or really bad day to go hard. Got it. Because I think that that becomes important as well is to know is to be able to know, um, which I have, I find people can't feel it, mm. but to know like really bad day to go really hard. Like if I go really hard today, bad things can happen. Right. My body just can't take it today. And that's okay. Cause we're human. 
The only time I see people be able, be able to override those things if they're on drugs. Right. Which I don't work with those people. Yeah. So um, what I do is just I create a legal system of recovery, you know, versus having have people cheat for recovery. Right. To get the most out of it. Wow, that's awesome, man. Well, you've worked with some legendary people. I mean, from from athletes to Navy SEALs, you know, to uh, Olympic gold medalists, ninjas. Like, <laughs> who's your favorite group of people to work with? And do you prefer to work with, with groups, actually, or do you prefer to work with people one-on-one? -on -one? Um, I, I like, I do, so I do very high-end one-on-one coaching. Yeah. Though I, I built Eat Super Cover to bring it to the general top. top yeah. Level. Most people can't afford $1,000 a month for something like this. Right. But at $99 a month, that includes all your top four supplements, you know, very high-end supplements. It's awesome. doable at that point. So I've, I've built programs for both. I love to speak on the, on the topic. And you travel. get some of those supplements in that cost? Oh yeah, you get you get your top four supplements what? every month. Yeah, and they're. Like, Did you the, guys create the supplement yourself, or are they like? No, I went out and handpicked my favorite ones. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm not a chemist. It yeah, cracks me up when people say, "Oh, I came up, I'm a trainer and I came out with my new supplement." Like, right. Can I just private label something. Yeah. So I just went out and found what I thought are the best ones. That's really cool. And I built the marketplace around that. All right, um, dude. Is it a month to month thing? People yep. need to sign up for. She's just making it so easy. Yeah, it's super easy. But yeah, but when it comes to my one on one stuff. Um, my favorite population, I, it's random. It's, it's super random. I have two. Um, I love tactile teams, like okay. SWAT teams. They're just these, um, they're, they're men and women like us right. that have families and kids at home and they're protecting us from the worst people in the face of the Crazy, earth. Crazy, bro. Yeah. And they do like their job they do is so insane. Yeah. So often it's, you know, the cr in the middle of the night, they're out running their warrants and stuff. And I love to support them because they protect That's us. That's awesome. And man. they're all in. Yeah. Right. I love that. And it's funny cause I know you're in the real estate world, but I, I have I've had a lot of success with very, successful female real estate agents like they're probably my second favorite group to work you know with. that that's one of my scariest people on earth yeah they're hardcore bro like yeah there's a couple there's like three where they've 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 haunted me in my in my nightmares before <laughs> there there is nothing scarier than a hungry fierce real estate lady yeah. ready to dominate the world yeah <laughs> and, and my favorite is like i just i, I i've studied them stop working with them bro <laughs> sorry man, i got but... kids <laughs> they're they're gnarly but that, gnarly. that is honestly yeah they they um <laughs> why i like them so much is because whatever i tell them to do, they do the extreme wow if they're hungry. what is it about female real estate agents are they typically like divorced and they're like i'm gonna show my ex that he can't do this so they're just like doing yeah. everything or like what's their deal no, I don't have any of them like that. They're just super hungry, highly driven people. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but um, I've had a lot of success and a lot of fun with them. Because I know whatever I... The, the thing I struggle is when I tell someone to do something. Right. And they don't do it. They and they come up with a reason. Oh, no, I think I need to do this. Like, right. why the hell are you paying me? Yeah. Like, female real estate agents, I tell them to jump. They ask how high. Wow. And they will figure it out. It's, and they get the best results ever. Our our industry at the top, almost every single company, there's a couple of female just weapons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just met with uh, brought a new client out of uh, New York City, Manhattan. She's okay. one of the top um, real estate agents in Manhattan. Wow, she's gnarly, just gnarly. And so, when you coach people one on one throughout the country, how many client, how many one on one clients do you typically work with at a time? I'll only work with ten at a time. Okay, ten at it's a time. It's just it's so much work. Yeah. Um, and I'm reading like heart rate variabilities every morning. I'm adapting every morning. Um, and so you're doing most of this stuff over the phone and they're sending you back their stuff. Yep. That's yeah. awesome. Dude. All my systems are built up. When I wake up in the morning, I turn my phone on. I see all the results. I know what they're doing. I know what they need to be doing. And I'll, I'll coach them on changes they need to make. That's and, so cool. Yeah. So it's fun. Yeah, I got, it's, I've worked with clients all over the world. That's so cool, man. Yeah. It's super cool. Well, one of the questions I want to ask you also is that you said, um, like, I know this is something you've been like obsessed with, right? <laughs> you push yourself so hard, close to death. Yeah. You know, how did it feel like when you hit that rock bottom? How'd you feel when you, when you turned your life back around? Um, I couldn't get out of bed, man. Damn. I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't function. I remember I would get home and I just put my, my, my daughter at the time. I just put her on the couch and beg her to watch a movie and fall asleep in five minutes. She had no experience with me. This is why I was so big with my little boy now. It's like it's such a big deal to me because I was so ashamed of of how tired I always yeah. was with my daughter that I wanted him to not experience that. Right. Um, it was it was uh, it was painful. Emotionally painful knowing that I couldn't be what I wanted to be for the people I love the most. Mm. Um, that was gut wrenching. Um, but I mean like literally like no sex drive. Uh, all I wanted to do was sleep all the time. Yeah. I wanted to be recluse. I wanted to be around anyone. After eating healthy and Eating, 
getting carbs out of here and working out like crazy, yeah. all that happened. Yeah, it backfired on me. Yeah. That's why I've kind of been on a mission to kind of wake people up. Right. It, it, it's just this reality of maybe what we've been shared is it, good for certain people. Like, had I chose not to exercise, I don't want to exercise at all, I just want to eat, like, I would have been perfect. Yeah. And that's fine. I have no judgment against it. It's just that I was training at such a high level, pursuing such a big goal. I just didn't know how to eat at that point. Wow. And, and what I see in the industry is nobody really knows how to feed people. Right. Now the big thing is keto diet. Yeah. I've seen some horrible responses of people on keto diet exercising really hard. Like that's the example of a diet I would never prescribe to somebody that yeah. wants to exercise. And that's just my opinion. What is, the, what is the, the, the diet out there that you think works the best? I think it becomes very individualized. Okay. Uh, and, and here's how you know you found it. I learned this from Dr. JT. I love it. If your schmeck is in check, the diet you're on is working. If your schmeck is in check. Yeah. So what it is, if you're sleeping well. Okay. If you're not hungry all the time, your hunger, your hunger is stable. You're in a good mood. You're optimistic all the time. Your energy is good, not highs and lows yeah. or crashing all day. And you're not having cravings. Mm. The diet you're on is allowing you to recover and manage the stress you're under from your exercise in life. Okay. So if your schmeck is in check, you win. If your schmeck is out of check, you got to start changing things. All right. So like, so I mean, at that point, like, if somebody comes to me like, I, I want to do the keto diet. Right. Okay, fine. Well, we got to get a lifestyle set up to where your schmeck's in check. Got and it. And it's working. Now, my little 10-year-old girl came to me that day. She's like, came to me four months ago, Daddy, I'm a vegetarian. I love animals too much to eat them. Well, I'm sure as hell I'm not going to rip her apart and say, no way, you're eating animal meat. <laughs> yeah. You know, you do yeah, gymnastics. Yeah. It's like, all right, let's figure let's it figure out. Let's figure it out. Let's figure it out. And so we've just been working through it. And I don't know anything about it. So I'm learning about it. And, yeah. Uh, you know, we're, we're just making sure her schmeck's in check so she stays healthy. Wow. Well, what I really got from you today, man, is it's about being aware of yourself. Yes. Everything's different. Yeah. If it's keto, if it's paleo, if you're, you're going to go vegetarian like it's being aware and yeah. being present to your energy and how you feel yeah yeah i think the biggest power most powerful tool in the nutrition realm is carbohydrates complex carbohydrates okay uh, like i have most of my clients eating large amounts of carbohydrates every night before bed interesting carbohydrates are the best way to bring the stress response down okay if you do it at the end of the day after you've exercised or or even after exercise another good time to do it anytime you need to bring stress down i like people to eat carbs all right i got rid of my diabetic issue by eating carbs every night Wow. Yeah, total. Like, there's another exact opposite of what people tell you to do. But it's all about controlling your stress. Okay. So, carbs low during the day so your brain works better. Carbs at night to shut it all down, help you fall asleep and sleep better, yeah. recover better. Carbs drive an anabolic recovery response. All right, man. Yeah. So like there you it. go. There's your steroid I like shot. It, dude. Carbs. Appreciate that. I'm going to have some carbs then. Yeah. And for the everyday person like myself who, like, I got a pretty good workout regimen, right? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm doing a good hour every day of cardio, a little bit of weights, this and that. I feel pretty good. Yeah. I do drink two cups of coffee every single day by like 11. Yeah. Any, any tips for me? Anything you'd recommend me doing? Uh, yeah. Besides I mean, signing up. I'm signing up, dude. Cool. I'll get All you right. hooked up. Um, I'll hook up the listeners too. I'll get you guys a discount right, cool. code for the listeners. Awesome. But, um, um, couple things. Um, Drink half your body with an ounce of water a day. Make okay. sure you're drinking plenty of water. Lots of water. Super important. Now, here's another important thing is to put a pinch of sea salt in every bottle of water you drink. All right. You want to make sure there's minerals in the water so you actually absorb the water into your cells. That huh. will give you more energy. Okay. And put sea salts and Himalayan pink salts all over your food. It has all the trace minerals in it. It's the exact opposite of what white strip out table salt does. And just put, put some of that Himalayan sea salt in my water. In your water. Every bottle of water you drink, put it all over your food. Okay. Those are the minerals that feed your cells and will help you um, optimize the performance of your cells and hydrate you. Okay. Which drives better energy, better brain performance, all that stuff. Um, and then I would make sure you have carbs every night at dinner. That's what's up. Yeah. Just to shut it all down, to calm <laughs> you down. It's just for me, KP. Yeah. It's just for me. <laughs> yeah. That's, that, that's, those are some like the, the biggest things I see making an impact on people. My man. Yeah. What's the final message you, you really want to, if there, if there were one message, you yeah. know, if there were a, the, the, the Brad Davidson t-shirt, right? What's it say on it? Ooh. It could be a hat. I've already got it, man. It says eat, sleep, recover. <laughs> eat, sleep, recover. I think that's the most important dude, three words for high-stress, high-achieving people. Those are the three things I don't do. Exactly. I'm not even playing. Exactly. I don't eat. I haven't. Have I eaten today? I, honestly, dude, I don't think I fucking ate today. <laughs> Damn it. I drank a smoothie. I had a little bit of breakfast. My wife always makes me breakfast, but I got an issue with, with not eating. Yeah. I just go, 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 That's go, go. every high-performing wow. executive I work with. Eat. Sleep. I don't sleep. I do five and a half hours a night. Yeah. This morning, I told my wife that I'm going to start going to sleep at 9.50 instead of 10.50. Yeah. And uh, I don't even know what recover means. So I'm going to find out. 
That's what I'm telling you. Like the, that's the differentiating factor between being the best in the world and not quite getting there. Love it, dude. It's all about who recovers the best. Man, that's awesome. That is why athletes take steroids to get themselves to a higher yeah. level. All they're doing is driving better recovery. Wow. So, how, how do people reach you? Uh, on Instagram. Yep. Um, I'm coach underscore Brad underscore Davidson. Yeah. Uh, also, you can just check out uh, Eat Sleep Recover on Instagram. And then, um, yeah, website's eatsleepercover.com. My man. Where yeah. do they get the book? Probably uh, on your website, yeah. right? Uh, well, it's on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. All, all the traditional outlets was where you can find that at. I love this program. Yeah. Well, dude, super, super stoked. Thank you for being a part of our seven equity series. You dropped some major bombs. I know that uh, our listeners are going to be really stoked to hear this. Appreciate all the work that you're doing. Appreciate all the energy you're putting out there. I'm going to go eat. I'm going to go sleep. And I'm going to go recover. Love it. Thanks, brother. You're welcome, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah. All right.